To discuss all of this, we're joined here on set by Arya Green, Director Emeritus of Media Central in Jerusalem, and Middle East analyst Micha Halpern. Welcome to you both, Arya. I'll start with you. You know, nobody expected the Israeli-Palestinian conflict to be settled out and solved in two days of the Bahrain summit. But what would you say has been the main achievement? Is it the Arab state's participation? Well, the truth is, I think that is one thing, but we've seen that over the last few years in terms of more and more interaction between Gulf states uh, and others in the Arab world with the Israeli government and uh, academics and, and cultural leaders and the like. But you know what's interesting for me is uh, the foreign minister of Bahrain, Al Khalifa, said explicitly these words, that the Jewish people have a place among us. And that issue, the recognition of the legitimacy of the Jewish national enterprise, the Jewish people returning to our ancestral homeland and having legitimacy recognized by the Arab and Muslim world, that's what we're waiting for to achieve real peace in the region. You know, Micha, the Palestinian Authority called the summit a cover for Arab normalization with Israel. They have a special word for it in Arabic. They call it tatbi, normalization with the state of Israel. Is that the Palestinians' biggest nightmare? Well, it's worse than a nightmare, actually, because what really is happening is that the rest of the Muslim world and the rest of the world in general has sort of said to the Palestinians, your agenda doesn't jive with our agenda. We have a bigger agenda, and it's not simply the Palestinians. Mm. It has to do with the Israelis, it has to do with the United States, it has to do with Iran, it has to do with money, it has to do with development, and the Palestinians are just one little niche in that. So the time has come to put them in the right spot. So their lack of presence there and their continued childish response sort of even shows exactly this issue. But here's the question. Um, what do you think the Trump administration has achieved with this summit? Will it be easier for the Trump peace team to recruit the same Arab states that attended the summit in Manama, Bahrain, to support the political phase once it comes out? I'd imagine yes. And, and the reason for that is what we've seen here is the initialization of a process which legitimizes just what Micha is saying, the normalization, as it were, of an understanding between the Arab world, the wider Muslim world and their leaders, and Israel, and the legitimacy, as I said, of Israel itself as a player, and it also legitimates the Trump administration in their efforts because it's simply acknowledged by all the players that this was a first step. But you know what critics say, that economic initiatives of this kind have failed in the past, time and again. What is different about the Trump peace team effort? Well, one of the most important issues is not just whether or not it failed or succeeded in the past, is that right now it is happening. How do you measure so, success? So Exactly. So because something is happening, that's already a bigger success than what was before. Uh, now, is it a large success or a small success? Well, ask me next week. Right now, I can only say that I did not expect it to get this far. Hmm. Neither did I expect that um, leaders of the world and business leaders would step up and say, we're, we're in favor. You see, the reality is that all these measures have been tried, whether it be political or economic or anything else. The question is, what's going to move a little closer to a resolution? And I just don't mean the resolution with the Palestinians and the Israelis. I mean with the totality that is moving ahead to try to solve bigger problems. Once the Palestinians realize that they're a part of a larger picture, then they're going to join in. If they're not, they're going to remain in the exact same situation. And that's destructive. But the Palestinians have main, uh, two main preconditions for every kind of negotiations with Israel. The vision of a two-state solution plus recognition of East Jerusalem as a future Palestinian capital. Do you see any scenario in which Arab states will exert pressure on Israel to meet these two preconditions? Well, if you're asking me the truth is, I do see that pressure uh, starting or continuing because it has been there for quite a while. Um, but to go back to answer, to combine that with your first question, your initial question about whether or not this will change anything, I think that you're picking up on something very important. Although there's good vibes coming out, as Nurit reported here on I-24, there's uh, a feeling that this is a big deal. There's absolutely no question that without a fundamental recognition by the Arab and Muslim and Palestinian leadership of the legitimacy of Israel, then these economic uh, efforts will not uh, necessarily come to any real fruition. And the problem there, as you're asking, is that the pressure then has to be continued on the Palestinian, the Arab, the Muslim leadership less so than on the Israelis. There's a, there's a bigger issue here also. The Palestinians have to realize, just like the Israelis have to realize, that this is a, a plan. It's just a draft. Mm -hmm. And in order to do a That's draft, right. you need right. to join and you, you take out some things, you add the sum, and you change, you alter, but you can only do that when you, it's just like a script or a letter to your grandmother. All right, uh, Micha Halpern and Arya Green, you're sticking around to discuss also the next topic. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is considering a proposal to cancel the upcoming 